This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, and horror show called Into the Dark Pilgrim. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During Thanksgiving, Cody listens to her parents argue until her mother walks out of their lives. Years later, Cody has dinner with her father, Shane, his wife, Anna, and their son, Tate. Anna is excited for their home harvest festival, where visitors will make their Thanksgiving dinner and teach them how things were done in the olden days. However, Cody thinks it's distasteful, as she believes Thanksgiving is whitewashing the conquering of Native American lands. Anna argues that it's about celebrating as a family, which they need to bring them closer. When Shane asks about Cody's Thanksgiving projects, Anna reveals that Cody has been skipping classes. Shane complains, given the money to pay for school, and Cody deflects at Anna for wasting more money on silly things like the festival. To change the topic, Shane urges his kids to make a wish and break a wishbone. Cody quietly wishes that the festival would backfire in Anna's face just before she wins the larger half of the bone. Later that evening, Cody hears a knock. Assuming it's Tate, she follows the knocking to his bedroom and finds him in his dresser. She lifts him to bed and hugs him goodnight. The following day, people gather in their home for an HOA meeting. Anna relishes the compliments from guests Diane and Gina. Diane asks how she found the Home Harvest Festival, so Anna recounts finding the ad for families with inattentive kids. She explains that it's a full reenactment of the first Thanksgiving to bring families closer together. Diane and Gina wish her luck, but when she turns around, they watch her with disdain. Cody navigates around the gathering but accidentally knocks over a coffee pot. While she's cleaning up, Diane and Gina walk in, not noticing Cody there. They gossip about how Anna spends more time on social media to parade her perfect life instead of actually being with her family. They mention Cody's mother not trying as hard as Anna and conclude that Cody won't accept Anna no matter what she does. The last guest, Catherine, arrives, so Anna hurries to start the meeting. Catherine's son and Cody's boyfriend, Finn, finds Cody in the kitchen while the adults are talking. He then brings out a vape to cheer her up, but Cody quickly hides it. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. Anna opens it and finds Ethan and Patience, who are dressed like pilgrims. Anna tells them they're early, but Ethan claims they need time to prepare. With no choice, Anna lets them in and introduces them to Cody. Ethan mentions that he looks forward to getting to know her in the next few days, but Cody thought it's only for dinner. Anna reveals that Ethan will stay with them for a few days while Patience will stay at Catherine's to be her live-in help, surprising both her and Finn. Catherine tries to refuse, but Anna insists that she needs to relax. At dinner, Ethan tells a story of his supposed experience on the Mayflower ship. During this, Anna actively engages with Ethan while Shane keeps an eye on the stock market on his tablet. While Anna shows Ethan where the bathroom is, Cody explodes about how weird it is to have a man acting like a pilgrim without breaking character. Shane insists that it's important to Anna, so they should enjoy it. However, Cody points out that he's been looking at his tablet the whole time. He defends that he's doing so to pay for everything, but the kid's sarcasm about it forces him to shut it off. Anna and Ethan return, and he starts talking about the first night with the Indians. However, Cody corrects that the Indians are the First Nation tribes. Still, he continues how the tribes taught them their ways while the pilgrims taught them the old world traditions. That night, Cody vapes by her window when she hears someone at the door. And no one's there when she checks, so she returns to her spot just as Finn arrives. The couple then relaxes in bed, and Cody hides her vape in a cross. She then complains about Ethan and how she couldn't find the website where Anna supposedly found the pilgrims. Finn assures her that things will return to normal after the pilgrims are gone. Meanwhile, Anna wonders about Cody's behavior, but Shane reminds her that his daughter gets angsty during this holiday. Still, Anna worries that Cody wants her to be an evil stepmother. Shane, however, focuses on his tablet until Anna asks if Cody blames her for separating her parents. Shane assures his wife that it's more likely that Cody blames him instead. Suddenly, Finn and Cody's moment is interrupted by a knocking. Cody checks on Tate and sees Ethan in her brother's bed with him. Ethan claims that he's telling Tate a bedtime story, but Cody asserts that it's already bedtime. Ethan says goodnight to the child and leaves with Cody. He then thanks her for opening her home to him, adding that Anna mentioned how Cody's mother left during Thanksgiving. Ethan shares that Thanksgiving is difficult for him too, as he once had a family, but now he wants to help other families see what they truly have. Creeped out, Cody returns to her room and asks Finn to stay over, just in case. The next day, Catherine laments over her cigarette withdrawal while surrounded by her messy house and overdue bills. Patience brews a herbal tea to help her sleep, and Catherine mulls over how no one has been helping her, not even her son. She rambles about Finn being wrapped up in his own world, though she doesn't blame him since she was also wild when she was young. Changing the topic, Catherine asks about Patience's acting career. 
Confused, Patience just shares that she started because of Ethan. She recounts how Ethan's mother died during childbirth and his father wasn't the best. Ethan has then translated this pain to find value in life. Catherine sympathizes with this, but Patience points out how she has shelter and food, which is a miracle. She asserts that Ethan teaches people to appreciate what they have because he knows what it means to have nothing. Patience then hands the tea to Catherine and watches the woman drink it. Later, Cody comes home and finds a new wooden shed in the backyard. She sends a photo of it to Finn, who just laughs it off. She then enters the house and sees Anna and Ethan replacing their light bulbs with candles to make the house more authentic for Ethan's time. Tate also presents a basket of berries, which he picked with Ethan. When Tate sneaks a taste of the berries, Ethan stops him. He shows the green stem of some berries, noting that this means they're Jerusalem cherries, which are poisonous. Cody questions where they got the berries, and Ethan just answers that gathering for their needs allows them to learn the ways of the land. She worries about how Anna allowed Tate to go berry picking alone with Ethan, but Anna assures her that it's fine. Anna then confiscates Cody's phone and laptop for the sake of authenticity. Ethan assures her that it's for the family, yet Cody is pissed, so she walks out after surrendering her phone. Later, Tate finds a sick crow, so he surrounds it with rocks to keep the ants away. Ethan sees this and rewards him with candy, which he happily eats. Ethan then tells him a story about a crow who found a piece of meat. While the crow was eating, it saw another bird carrying a dead mouse. The crow went after the bird to steal the mouse but couldn't catch up. The crow flew back to where it left the meat, but it was already gone. Ethan explains that the crow didn't appreciate what it had, so it lost the meat. Tate asks if this means he can't have more candies, and Ethan confirms. The boy shrugs and says that at least he got one piece. Delighted, Ethan looks to the sky and notes how he didn't have to take everything away from Tate to teach him. As a reward, he gives the boy another candy. After Tate leaves, Ethan steps on the sick crow's head, killing it. Finn returns home when he hears thuds upstairs. He goes to the guest room, where he finds Patience mindlessly using a bloody butter churner. Frightened, he hurries away and finds his dead mother on the floor with a cup of tea beside her. Finn hurries to call for help, but someone grabs him. Meanwhile, Cody finds Tate reading a Bible with Ethan in the shed. Concerned, Cody urges Tate to play hide-and-seek, allowing him to hide in the house. With him away, she confronts Ethan, accusing him of pushing his religion on her brother. Ethan wonders why she's against it, as he assumes she's religious because of the cross in her bedroom. Cody becomes alarmed that he's been in her room, so he mentions that he's heard voices from her room late at night. He then criticizes her for not showing respect to him, her parents, and herself, so Ethan promises that she will learn to appreciate what she has. Pissed, Cody goes to her father for help, but he's talking with more pilgrims that Ethan invited. Shane shares that they'll help him rebuild the garage, which he's excited about. Ethan enters and asks Cody to leave so the men can discuss. The events remind Cody of how her parents split up. However, when she looks up from the dining table, Ethan lunges at her with a carving fork. Cody wakes up from the nightmare and hears a knock on her bedroom door. Opening it, she finds Anna with a mournful look along with Patience. The two claim that Catherine has fled with Finn. Cody doesn't believe this, as Finn would have told her. Still, Anna adds that she invited Patience to stay with them since she doesn't feel safe alone in Catherine's house. Cody insists that what's happening isn't safe, but Anna just dismissively apologizes to her. Disappointed, Cody leaves and passes by more pilgrims praying at the dining table. After she leaves, Ethan invites the other pilgrims to pray while Tate is hiding nearby. Later, Anna joins the pilgrim women in preparing their Thanksgiving dinner, but she worries about Catherine and Finn. The women comment that things would have been better if Catherine was strong like Ethan since God exacts his will to those who don't listen. Disturbed, Anna walks away, only to see a pilgrim nailing a wreath over their fireplace. In the backyard, she sees a pilgrim building something. She then worriedly looks for Tate and Ethan comes up to her, suggesting that the boy might be in his room. Anna checks Tate's bedroom, but he's not there. She goes to Shane for help, but he thinks that Tate is just playing outside. She then points out what the pilgrims did to their house, and Shane shrugs it off as mere decorations. Angry, Anna yells at her husband to help, finally acknowledging that Cody was right about the pilgrims. She rambles how the pilgrims might have done something to Catherine, so she insists on doing something about it before it's too late for them. Suddenly, Patience appears and asks the parents to buy rosemary. Anna insists on finding their children first, but Ethan walks in, assuring them that the kids are safe. Seeing that they're not convinced, the pilgrims corner them. Meanwhile, Cody arrives at Catherine's house. While she's checking the kitchen, Finn's dead body falls from the closet. In her home, Ethan declares that Anna's family has taken things for granted. As the pilgrims have Shane and Anna in a pillory, Ethan promises that they will guide them to appreciate what they have. Shane threatens him that the neighbors will hear what they'll do, but Ethan claims that that's the point. 
After lashing Shane, Ethan scolds them for focusing on their electronics instead of their family. They then smash Shane's tablet and continue lashing Shane. Patience then brands Anna's back with an iron rod, making her scream as the pilgrims laugh. Soon, Cody rushes to her house but hears the commotion inside. She sneaks around the backyard and finds her parents. Quickly, she frees them, but a large pilgrim finds them. Cody grabs a mallet and fights back. Shane and Anna help, allowing Cody to slam the mallet on the back of his knee. They take turns hitting him until Shane smashes a rock on his head. Still, the pilgrim lives, so they each grab weapons, butchering him until he's dead. While the parents climb to Cody's bedroom window to find Tate, Cody goes to call for help but gets captured. Meanwhile, Shane reaches Cody's bedroom only to have Ethan stab his hand while Anna gets captured too. Ethan then pushes him off the window, making Shane collapse back in the backyard, where Patience kills him with an axe. With the women captured, Ethan accuses Anna of being so consumed with their image that she ignores what happens in her home. As punishment, Patience slaps Anna until Cody yells at her to stop. Using the lift that she's tied on, the pilgrims lift Cody towards the swimming pool and drop her in. They continue dunking Cody into the water and lift her before she drowns while Ethan berates her for feeling hollow despite having it all. After nearly drowning several times, Cody finally concedes and says she's grateful, yet they plunge her back into the water. Suddenly, they don't hear her thrashing in the water, so Anna weeps, and Ethan lifts Cody back up. Fortunately, Cody coughs up the water and is faced away from the pool. Ethan then tells her that people remember what's important in their lives when they face death. Later at the table, Patience orders Anna to shuck the corn while Cody mashes the berries. During this, Cody spots Tate, who's hiding from the pilgrims. Anna asks what they want and Ethan demands a feast with a grateful family. Suddenly, Cody agrees that they didn't value their lives. Shane provided for them, Anna took care of them, and together they gave her a little brother she loves. Cody never appreciated that until now. This satisfies Ethan, but Anna cries that it's not Cody's fault. Holding a knife to her throat, Ethan commands Anna to follow her stepdaughter's lead, but she defends that she never took her family for granted because she loved them. Before Ethan can slice Anna's throat, Cody grabs a knife and stabs Patience. Anna then throws Flora onto the candles, making the flames burst. Using the distraction, Cody runs across the house and finds Tate in a closet. Crying, he asks her what she wished for on the wishbone. With Anna still in their hands, Ethan checks on Patience, who assures him that she's fine. Ethan then orders everyone to find Cody, which the young woman overhears. She puts Tate back in the closet while she figures out how to escape, but the pilgrims quickly catch her. The men bring Cody to the dining table where Ethan and Anna wait. Cody assures Anna that Tate got out, but she hasn't found Shane yet. Ethan assures them that Shane will be here, so they begin the feast. The pilgrims set covered dishes on the table as Ethan recounts how Shane didn't appreciate them. Instead, he used his work to hide from them. However, Shane was still provided today, so they opened the dishes, revealing Shane's body parts. Patience then forces Anna and Cody to eat a piece as they mourn. The pilgrims happily eat their meals, ripping through Shane's body as they do. Soon, Ethan asks for more wine, so Patience heads to the kitchen to get more but hears something in the distance. Suddenly, the pilgrims start vomiting blood. Ethan realizes that Cody added the poisoned Jerusalem cherries into their sauce, so he forces himself to vomit it out. During this, Patience searches for Tate, but he's changed his hiding spot. She starts coughing blood, so Ethan screams for her to force herself to vomit. Patience does as she's told, but the ordeal makes her collapse, allowing Tate to sneak out. With the pilgrims down, Tate goes to the dining room to free his family, though seeing his father's body makes him vomit. As soon as she's free, Cody follows the weakened Ethan with a knife. He throws himself out the glass door to escape while Patience tackles Anna and beats her up. Anna hits her with a candelabra, then slams Shane's severed head against Patience. The pilgrim throws herself onto her, but Anna evades, allowing herself to grab a knife and stab Patience. Outside, Cody kicks Ethan down, causing him to burn his sleeves on their campfire. She taunts him just as Anna joins her. Ethan begs Jesus for help, but Cody calls this blasphemy. Anna then brands him with the iron rod before beating him with it. Cody then abandons her knife in favor of an axe. She asks him why he did this to their family and Ethan insists that he did it to make them grateful for what they have. He reminds Cody that this is what she wished for, and in response, she chops off his head. As Ethan dies, his limp hand opens, revealing the wishbone that granted Cody's wish. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.